Jason Stock's camp counselors in a 112th scale. Here's a look at the new Mezco Toys, Friday 13th, Part 3, 112 Collective, Jason Voorhees. This Crystal Lake Killer comes included with six interchangeable hands, two interchangeable heads, and two removable masks. To get this review underway, my friends, my colleagues of the interweb, we're going to first figure out how tall 112 Jason Voorhees stands. And taking the tape measure right to the very top of his head, stopping the tape measure right there, describing to the mob his measurements. You, my friends, my colleagues of the mob, you're looking at a figure that stands 6.4 inches in height, which in centimeters works out, boop, 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 right there, 16, 16.3 centimeters tall. Get a load of this. Coming included... Rounding out, I guess, the first batch of accessories. He comes with this really impressive Friday 13th Part 3 in 3D poster uh, display stand. Uh, a very cool looking display stand, to certainly say the least. This is, again, something that most companies don't do. To the credit of Mezco Toys, glad to see that they're including a really neat looking circular display stand. True, tried and true, yes, it is the same stand as we've seen before. But at the very least, they at least think out the you know stands and stuff like that that the figure is going to stand atop of speaking of standing atop of right there right there you can see that there's a little peg the peg does attach attach to either one of jason Voorhees' feet and this is probably going to be the way i'm going to display the figure actually in the beginning of this review i had the figure in a walking stance this is something that could be very easily accommodated by simply just pegging the foot into place right there instant diorama did you take courses on posing figures? No, I didn't. No, 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 I didn't. But uh, certainly right off the bat, that's one way that you can display the figure. The figure has much needed the posability points, all those articulation points in which you could pull off a pose like this. No class required. You could save yourself the money. I don't even know what a pose class would be. Certainly you would not want to make sure that you wander into a poser class. I don't think it would be the exact same type of class. Just, just saying. One thing as well that you can do with these display stands, as you've certainly seen, hopefully, with these reviews in the past, is... Let me just get him to stand right there. Stay there right there, Mr. Voorhees. You can take the display stand, take the adjustable neck, which I didn't really introduce just yet. He does have the adjustable neck. We'll talk about that in a second. You can just take that and pop this through. Actually, it goes from the bottom side there. Just pop that through like that. Don't lose the peg. You're going to need that. Put that right over to the side and uh, just switch this around, pop this into, into the top, and now instantly you've got yourself a display stand. Uh, unfortunately, I don't feel like the stand serves a purpose for Jason. I mean, I guess if you, you, know, you wanna have him leaping, I suppose, you know, you could have him jumping up into the air. I don't think that really works for Jason Voorhees myself, but you, know, you could certainly do that as well. There you go. Oh, that looks ridiculous. Probably not going to be how most people are going to be displaying it. But it seems to be the tried and true. This is the stuff that Mezco always just bleh, throws up, includes with their figures. You should get into marketing. Yeah, I get a lot of people telling me that. Uh, but that's certainly one way that you can display the figure. And I guess in some ways, to the defense of the stand, I guess you can adjust the stand. It doesn't have to be completely. There we go. It still doesn't look right, does it? You don't really see Jason leaping up in the air like that. Certainly nothing within his hands. I guess we probably will need some accessories. Let's have a look at those now. Yeah, as for his accessories, this fella does come with a fair bit. Why don't we have a look at these right now? Well, we started this review with an axe. Why don't we look at that axe right now? Really nice done, I have to say, by Mezco Toys. It does look like an axe, just a little bit smaller. Silver is something... Silver is also a Lone Ranger's horse, but silver is one thing that toy companies seem to struggle with when it comes to metal. Metal, often at times, the tried and true go-to before was simply just slapping regular 
uh, metallic silver to the blades of anything. Often at times it did look rather fake. I have to say this is one of the more realistic axe handles, axe heads I've seen. Even like the blood is very naturally spread across the tip. Oh, no, it's not really sharp. The tip, the head of the, the, uh, the axe there. Some nice wood grain also incorporated into the axe. It does seem a little on the small side when holding it with both of his hands. So you may only want to favor displaying him with the axe in one hand, or you sort of just can counterbalance it. In the beginning of this review, I just, in the one hand, it doesn't actually look so short. When you add it to the second hand, the second hand, luckily these hands are also very pliable, so it's a little easier to get these axe, the axe or really any one of the accessories into his hand. There you go. You can display it like that. It does look a little short, I will admit it, but I mean, axes generally are not very long anyways. We're not talking spears, my friends. So that's one way that you can display the figure. Uh, let's not also take his hand along for the ride. We're just gonna put that right over there and replace his hand thusly into the socket section there. We'll put him right there. We'll continue our endeavor into looking at his accessories. He also comes included with a pitchfork. A pitchfork with whoop, 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 whoop. Five, five points, generously sprinkled with blood there as well. I'm sure somebody got it in the barn. A game of guess who with Jason Voorhees would be pretty easy. I would just guess, would I'm gonna guess biker, barnyard, or barn, uh, barn building, and I'm gonna guess pitchfork. You win. Uh, the pitchfork actually does look just as good as the axe. I like that they've added a little bit of a dark grain to it, so it makes it look like it's very much a wood handle pitchfork. I kid you not, though, it's actually made of plastic. No, no, it, no, it really is. Introducing, introducing to you the audience, introducing also the hockey mask in the movie, Jason Voorhees comes also included with his tried and true a harpoon gun. Uh, the harpoon gun does look rather good. Sensitive, I'm supposing, to breakage, so you want to be a little bit careful to the point there if you want to get to the point. But uh, a neat looking, very well received, deserving, a fitting accessory. The, uh, the harpoon gun does look rather good. And again, if you want to just display it into his hand, you kind of already know how this goes by now. It's nothing new here. Nothing new to report. There you go angle it right off he like I said he has the suitable oh look at that right at you I don't think that would be the noise that a harpoon gun would make but that's the harpoon gun that it makes while we're doing this review so it comes with that possibility for the way to display the figure oh I don't know maybe comes also included with a cleaver again talking a little bit about that brushed metal it's the key though I think is dark silver and just like those scrapings there, the dry brushings of the lighter metallic silver is the key to making metal look real. Nice job. Nice job also on the blood splatter there. Uh, also comes included with the fire poker. You don't generally check out the mantle while you're poking the fire. <laughs> heavily, heavily doused in blood. Again, it looks like it's been used. Metal. Mm, looking good. I like it. Also comes included, tried and true, speaking of tried and true, the machete. Machete also has, well, we're treading on similar discussions, bringing up the same points I already mentioned before, so you with peepers can certainly just see how splendor, what splendorous paint job Mesco Toys has done to the machete there. Also included, I know there's still more, comes with a knife, blood, consistent pattern on all of these and uh, not as much blood in fact no blood at all it comes also included with a wrench never really would consider displaying Jason Voorhees with a wrench but you know it's nice that they would include it a wrench it comes also with some interchangeable hands some gripping I'm gonna crush your head like a melon hand also comes just a regular grabbing hand not as not as aggressive in this hand as this hand here I guess this would be the paired hand. No, no, it's actually the same hand. This hand is really not that much different than this hand right here. Sort of begs the question, did we actually need hands so identical to one another to be included? I don't know, maybe I'm just asking for 
answers that really don't exist. And then also a trigger hand. Going back a little bit to the item that had very bad sound effects delivered by this reviewer. Uh, there is the harpoon gun trigger hand, not quite lining up. Not, not really. I guess you could. There we go. There we go. Just kind of pry it. If it ain't, if it ain't gonna fit, just gonna keep working away at it. There we go. Trigger hand fits very securely into the handle portion of the harpoon gun. Okay, so before we have a look at these, we're going to look at this. And just before we look at this, we're also going to look at this. It comes also included with the 112 Collective. Something else that's given with all of these 112 figures is this baggie. So if you want to take all your weapons of destruction and death, you can put them in there. The only thing you got to be careful, though, is when you are putting the accessories in, I would say immediately, like, if you're putting this storage, put this in storage, sort of fold it up very carefully, lay it down. Don't just take it and, you know, throw it. That's, it's over, it's over there. Uh, shouldn't demonstrate something that I can't really grab it. But don't, what, what I was gonna say is don't just grab it, whip it into whatever tote you're gonna be throwing it into. Be a little careful, come on. We're not Vikings after all. Uh, as, I, as I would say, you know, some of these items are a little on the fragile side. You don't wanna just throw this into a tote and just dump stuff on top of it, because things like this little, uh, the end of the harpoon would certainly get broken. So just uh, be very careful. We don't have to be overly aggressive with this stuff. So let's have a look at the figure. Then we're gonna look at all his, all his, his two other swappable options, his mask and his alternate head sculpt. Before we look at that, let's have a look at this head sculpt. This has been on my radar. This has been on my radar for the longest of times. Generally, as you could probably see from this reviewing channel, I don't really review a whole lot of Mezco Toys 112 collective scale figures, just because I'm really not as much keen into, say, some of the Marvel and some of the DC variety. Some of them I have picked up. And those are the ones, of course, we have looked at on this channel. Then we start talking about horror figures. Look out. Jump back, Jack. Now we've got something that is worth talking about. I'm not really certainly dismissing Mezco 112 figures. But again, like, I think you have to be a collector. Eh, that's not true. I shouldn't even generalize by making a statement like that. But I think if if you're really into the, the vein of picking up Mezco 112 figures, you're probably picking up a lot more than, say, just the the casual collector that maybe is only sourcing out one figure here and there. Again, I may not find myself delving, uh, jumping fully headfirst into a world of collecting 112 figures on a regular basis, but certainly things like Jason Voorhees, well, we gotta, we certainly gotta look at those. So, like, the mask is pretty good, I have to say. That little bit of weathering, that little bit of love right there is certainly well appreciated by this humbled, humbled reviewer. Of course, the chevrons there are fully intact, none of which really have been worn away yet. Jason's murderous endeavors have uh, still continued to go past part three. Those chevrons certainly are the first, the first victims. No, that's not true. Ha, ah, there's so many other victims before that. But the chevrons do certainly wear out as the movies progress. And then we just change out the mask completely and everybody asks why. Hey, wait a minute. He's got a underdeveloped ear on the one side and ear on the other. I really must say, what, right off the bat, paint on this guy is really good. We're going to go ahead and take his mask off. Yes, the mask is removable. You just want to be very careful that you don't accidentally break the straps. The mask is soft plastic, just FYI. And there's the head sculpt underneath, really happy with also this head sculpt. Sort of got a natural transition of colors, you know, where you don't have really dark, dark flesh tones on the backdrop of otherwise regular flesh tones. They all seem to kind of blend well together. I don't think it's as defined, for example, as say the NECA Jason Voorhees, but I have to admit, pretty good head sculpt all around. I really like a little bit of that sheen that they've added to the face, just gives it a more of a sweatier complexion. I'm all about a sweatier complexioned Jason. Also the deformities in his neck as well as his shoulders are all captured there as well. Very, very happy. Would I ever display the figure with this? Oh, no way. No way, man. I would, of course, display him with the mask. Uh, actually, by the way, FYI, you can see as well that the eyes are pointing in the one way. Well, actually, one eye is sort of kind of looking this way. It's funny, actually, that the eyes look more like they're looking at you and then when you put the mask on, it almost seems like the, the eyes are wandering this way. Maybe I'm just seeing something that's not there. 
Uh, his outfit, of course, consists of the green, forest green shirt. Underneath that is a white t-shirt. Um, look like you can detach this. I don't know why you would want to open up his shirt. Maybe there is a few buttons on there. No, it looks like it's been seamed shut. He does also have a belt looped through some very nice uh, tailored pants. And then it comes all the way down to, of course, his high, high top boots. And it, even like the boots themselves are really done well. No complaints, no gripes whatsoever. A little bit of dirt on the under treads there of his shoes as well. Very, very happy. Very, very happy. I'm very, very happy with this guy, as you can probably guess it. Uh, the arms, actually, everything about this guy is fully realized. I mean, really, if you if you roll up his sleeves, only of which is then where you start seeing, oh, okay, that's where, that's where the rest of the Mezco body starts. But, like, really, right from the forearm down is full Jason. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's not simply the case where they're just taking the hands or even just taking around the area of his watch if he was to wear a watch. He has to keep time of time of when he has to go kill the counselors after all. But I mean, no, here you have a fully finished arm. Nice job, nice job. Nice real job also on the coloring, color matching of this guy. You know, his colors are pretty accurate right down to even like his pants are kind of that silverish kind of green color. It's very hard to seem, seems to be a very hard color to match. Um, even like this guy has been more successful, even just from a smaller scale, than even like the Sideshow Collectibles Jason, which again, as you probably saw in that review, colors were a little, little wonky. Not quite, not quite jiving the correct movie colors. As for his head sculpt, I mean, again, we'll look at this head sculpt, and then he also, of course, comes with the axe wound head sculpt. There is a little bit of a mild variance in the head sculpt as well. This one has a little bit more of an angrier expression in his in his mouth. Of course he would. I mean, he's got an axe wound in the top of his head. So you can have the two various, two various, two plausible, plausible ways to display the figure. We'll go ahead and just pop the head off. A very easy ball joint. I'm loving that as well. There we go. And uh, just in case you are wondering, let's get the other hockey mask going on there as well. Slides that on. The hockey mask... I know, you saw me grab the axe. The hockey mask, there we go. This one fits a little bit tighter. It doesn't feel like it sits as well as the other one. Seems like it also kind of leans off to the side. There's the two different head sculpts. It's not really that much different between this one and this one, other than this one does seem warped. And it also has the axe wound. Now, if you want to, you have to kind of line up everything. There we go. That's uh, still a little warped, but at least, at the very least, you can take the axe. And uh, you, you can have a successful, thum, successful wedge of the axe into the axe wound. And then I guess, I guess if you want to use the gripping hands then, that would be the reaching out, you know, as he's walking towards her while this axe wound is, axe is plunged right into the top of his temple. So again, a really neat looking way to display the figure. I probably will never display him with the axe wound, but it's a plausible possibility. Uh, again, looking at the head sculpt too, nice slick bit of wet red blood dripping down the side of his face. There's the alternate head sculpt once again. So you can see the difference between the two. Really cool with both of these. Really cool also with the idea of maybe possibly picking up there. You know, he's going to say it, he's going to drop it possibly picking up a second one of these just just in case because i think the head sculpt is actually really good it would argue the point of maybe getting a second one of these to display this guy without the head sculpt dare you say dare i say let's have a look at this guy's articulation his head rotates all the way around hinges up and down just fyi as well it's using a dumbbell ball joint ball joint there ball joint there so it gives you essentially two ball joints working together in perfect harmony Shoulders hinge outward, no restrictions by his fabric. Uh, the shoulders move forward, they move back. Full swinging axe clubbing action. Has a hinge in the elbow. Um, does rotate, actually rotates more so at the bicep than it does on the forearm. And the hands rotate all the way around, hinging also back and forth. Upper torso ball joint, lower waist swivel, legs split, forward, back, uh, swivel cut on the top cut of the thigh, a double double hinge on the knee. And then as we look at the boots, thank goodness for this, the boots have their own ball joint, 
or swivel joint, I suppose, if you wish. He has an ankle rocker back and forth and up and down on the feet. As this humbled reviewer says to the mob, like I said, I don't normally collect a whole lot of 112 figures. You could probably count on two hands the number of figures that I have picked up. Often at times, Mezco Toys 112 figures, a little bit more expensive, a little bit more expensive, usually on average of about $100 or more to snag these for yourself. But the trade-off at least is that they have unique sculpts to one another and the also the tailoring of fabric outfits certainly elevate these figures a little bit higher than action figures. Short of the 3D vision, this Jason Voorhees has everything I would want for a figure. A good definitive Jason, if you will, if you're interested in a 112 scaling. He's a little bit smaller than some action figures and, of course, tailored with new fabric outfits. He certainly stands out than some of your other Jason plastic figures. The debatable topic, of course, is being that these are premium figures, are they worth paying the 100 to 120 price point often that I see these figures going for? One could certainly argue the point that the figures better are better looking than, say, retro cloth figures from NECA Toys. Even though retro cloth figures on average are about a $35 to $40 price point, you're definitely paying a lot more for 112 figures from the folks over at Mezco Toys. So what do you really get from that? Well, I have to say you get a better tailored costume. It doesn't feel like it just simply falls on the figure like some of the retro cloth figures. The figure is also a little bit more poseable as well, giving you the options to put them in poses that maybe some other like cloth figures of this scale simply just can't accomplish. When it's all said and done, is the 112 collective Jason Voorhees worth really the $100 to $120 price point that they're asking for? Yes. But I don't think I would pick up every single 112 figure, as it's probably case in point here on this channel, just because the price on these guys are so high. I'm very, very much a selective uh, collector when it comes to these pieces. Jason Voorhees and the upcoming release of Freddy Krueger are figures I just simply couldn't pass on. They look really good. And for these select figures, I'm more than happy to pay the extra price to pick them up. Are you guys interested in 112 figures? I mean, again, they're of a very much a niche market. A little bit smaller, but I think you're getting just as much out of these guys as you would with the sideshow or six scale figures of Jason Voorhees. Just a little bit smaller and about a half the price point. Uh, really, again, happy with how this guy turned out. I'm looking forward to putting him in various different poses. Probably going to maybe display this guy with the harpoon gun for a very long time because I just think that's such an iconic look. It's the first appearance of Jason Voorhees with the mask. And it's also the first time we've got Jason Voorhees in a 112 collective figure. Maybe you never know. We might get ourselves future 112 collective. I don't know what the licensing is that Mezco has been able to acquire for the Friday 13th franchise. But maybe based on this scale... They may, you never know, be able to do more Jason Voorhees in this sort of tailored outfit or this tailored look. And it's certainly definitely a different take, a different way to collect Jason Voorhees above and beyond simply just collecting the plastic 7-inch figures that NECA Toys have been releasing up to this point. If you guys are interested, some good news, my friends, colleagues. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to find Jason Voorhees now at your local comic book store. This guy is now out some good news. Very, very good news. This guy, like I said, was on my radar for the longest time. That doesn't even sound like a radar. Make sure you you hit that little subscribe button down below, my friends, colleagues of the interweb. Certainly mob as well, if you guys are interested. More videos will be coming soon to this channel. Duh. And this guy's always posting new videos to this channel. So stay tuned. Keep your eyes peeled. More videos will be coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.